Okay. So the shortcomings of that, as I said a little earlier, is that you need to be able. To, you can't. It's more difficult for us old boys to see. Youngsters like you. I mean, for goodness' sake. I mean, you can probably see them at, you know, 20 meters. <laughs> Yeah. Any questions on that one? He's just taking a picture of it. Is that all right? <laughs> Is it copyright? Copyright. <laughs> There's nothing new in fly tying. How many times have you heard me say, it, it, fly tying's easy? It, it, there's no mystery in it, you know? So. So once again, we'll put the shock in. <coughs> try not, when you put shocks in, try not to make them too heavy and too uniform, you know? And sometimes just a little bit of crystal flash or light bright works a treat, especially the pearl color. But going back to the comment that you made, when the fish are looking up at it, what they're seeing is something, uh, if, it, if it's like a, a, a pearl type light bright or something pale, they, they're just seeing something that's almost translucent, translucent, like when it shed its shuck. So there's light shining through it. Mm -hmm. but, but try not to make them too uniform in shape or, or size, because some of them will be different than others. It's, it's a good thing to watch what's going on around you when you're fishing, you know? What's the material that you're using for the shuck? Is it antron? This is just antron, but there's a variety of materials you can use. Um, this is, I, I use this a lot, this is an aero wing. Um, the, the problem with this, it makes a great shock, but the problem is you really have got to get something on it to buy the very definition, it's aero wing, so it wants to float. Um, but I usually um, get a bit of mud or something on it to make it dirty. Uh, and then it'll. And once it gets good, once it gets properly wet, it'll stay under. But it's it's in the. It's in, if you're river fishing like I do a lot of, um, the first few casts matter. You know, sometimes you only get one chance at a fish, so you you, you can't you, you can't you know be waiting for it to sink up after a half a dozen casts. You've got to try and get it down there. <coughs> I had any. I'll stick to the Chadwicks. Is it still there? Oh yes. <laughs> It's Yeah, Antron's great stuff. Um, it, if you chop it up fine, it makes great dubbing as well. Mix it up. You've got a coffee grinder. Old co yeah. Go and steal your wife's old coffee grinder. That's how I make my dubbings. You do need a dubbing rake for mole, though. I've just had to buy that. I got a shock. I broke my other, well, it broke. I'd only had it 40 years. I couldn't understand what the hell was going on. <laughs> Took me ages to find one, you know. I, I rang everybody. Have you got a dubbing rake? Have you? I could have bought one from Hairline, a ceramic one, 120 pounds. <laughs> 120 pounds. I'd expect to go fishing for a year for that kind of money. I used to be a member of the Kiriog Fly Fishers. But I got banned by the wife. Well, it was. I got banned because I am. Um, Fishing in the Kiriogs a bit, like, little bit like jungle warfare. I was younger and thinner and fitter in those days, but I still had a fall one day and uh, came home with my waders punctured. So I got the finger from the missus on the basis of, I don't want you going fishing somewhere where there's no cell signal and if you fall over and break, and she was right, if you, you break your leg or something like that, because, you know, we're not steady in our pins as we get a bit older, so leaping from rock to rock wasn't exactly great fun. Um, but so, so, so for about two years, I had this arrangement with the um, the secretary of the club, who actually lived on the river, and I used to go to his house, tell him exactly where I was going to uh, to fish, 
and then I used to book in with him and then I had to go to his house and tell him I, I was on and she was happy with that for a couple of years but it was great fishing no stock fish all wild oh beautiful how long since you've been sorry how long since you've been oh probably six years seven years now and they've had a lot of trouble with pollution oh really mm, apparently it was it was like gin clear when i was there that's well farmers for you then. Dubbing. Uh, rule of thumb with dubbing is you can put more on, but it's difficult to get it off. So always be as sparse as you can. Um, and the other thing is you don't have to go up in one layer. You can come back. A lot of people dub from the front to the back and then back again. If you want to, if you were tying something like a sedge where you want a chubby body, it's better to put a very small amount on start at the front, come to the back and then go back over it because the thread will hide it and it will strengthen it as well. So what do the beginners think of it so far? It's a great film. Very good. Yeah. Is it informative? Yeah. It's just a progression on the basic stuff, really. So, once again, if you've got a rotary vice, let the vice do the work for you. You got a rotary vice, Jeff? Strangely enough, I had a lot of problems with it. <clears throat> Couldn't get a motor start. <laughs> <laughs> right. No, I've completely misunderstood the parachute bit. You can't turn the bedroom window holding it for <laughs> 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 what are you like? <laughs> you were lucky. <laughs> I, I heard you were jumping off the top of the wardrobe with it. <laughs> I mean, that's John Cody. <laughs> so, what I'm doing is I'm putting the sighter in behind the loop. Yeah? And I'll explain to you what I'm going to do with it. I'm going to tie the hackle in exactly as I did before. And I'm going to come up about three turns on both the sighter and the loop. Mm -hmm. Then I'm going to pull the sighter out of the way, like this, yeah? And then I'm going to continue up <coughs> and down. When I get back to the sighter, I'm going to pull it forward, and I'm going to wrap it around the sighter again. The sighter at this point will be sticking backwards, like this. When I pull it forward, it will pull up into a more vertical position, which will give us a poor visual skills, <laughs> yeah? Um, something to, 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 to focus on, yeah. yeah? Now, you can use exactly the same principle for putting a wing in, yeah? And if, so you, instead of putting the wing in, Instead of putting a sighter in, if you use if you use a loop like that, do exactly the same, pull this loop back, finish it off exactly the same way, and when you've finished your fly, cut the loop. And you'll end up with a wing like that. Mm -hmm. Spent ones are easy, because all you do is you tie your wing in and then you pull your para loop over the wings and they splat, splat out. I, I, I never know why we put wings like this on flies anyway, because they're either like this yeah, or yeah. that. <clears throat> I even less understand why we put wings on winged wets. <laughs> but that's just me being awkward. <laughs> so I'm just going to hide that sighter with a 
tiny little bit of dubbing on the thorax area. Right. So this is a size 14 hook. What I tend to do when I'm tying paraloop flies is go one size up. So I would, I would pick a hackle that would be suitable for a size 12. Mm -hmm. Because it's all above, you see. <coughs> Who's going to clean up after we do the deer hair bit? <laughs> Are you married? Don't tie deer hair flies where your wife's any, anywhere near. The mess it makes, it's unbelievable. Well, you can have a Dyson, really. <laughs> yeah. I'm very, very lucky. I've got a, a man cave which is um, given over completely to doing the things that I want to do, you know? I like, bought a mini Hoover. Oh, you bought a Hoover? Yeah, I didn't want to hand out. You, yeah, but the question yeah, is... The question is, do you use it? Yeah, yeah. Guess where it came from? Go on. China. All <laughs> 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 right, so I've just tied the hackle in at the base of both the sighter. Yeah? yeah. So <coughs> I am um, it's a bit of a fiddle I have to say, right? Mm -hmm. Keeping that sighter out of the way. I have actually tried putting two of these on and having one holding it out of the way, but that seems to work reasonably well. Mm -hmm. uh, Lindsay Simpson wouldn't like it because you waste a lot of Antron doing it that way. But... <laughs> you stick a bit of blue tackle. You're doing lots of vacuum cleaning, but uh, I sort of do woodworking as a fairly serious hobby, and I'm, I'm sure I do far more vacuuming than in my workshop with Mary Edwards in the house. <laughs> Well, I, I'm not saying it with any shots of her. I mean, I'm very lucky. She agreed. She agreed. She says, "Oh, lucky fact." I'm very lucky because uh, I've, I'm a retired engineer, so I still try to keep kidding myself that I can do it. Hence the reason why I build vices and stuff like that. But another one of my hobbies is building motorcycles. Yeah. So I've got a lovely workshop with lathe and milling machines and all the welding gear and all that kind of stuff. So I've got two man caves, as it are, both stacked up on top of each other. My wife never goes anywhere near them, but when she does come in to say, bring me a cup of tea, and the workshop is always absolutely immaculate, she said, how much time do you spend doing anything in here? And, and, and it's like, you can't work dirty. And in the drawers in my my, 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 my cabinets, everything's got shadow foam in it with all the... Because if I don't put it back, I can't find it. <laughs> and do you, you, you end up in a lot of vacuum cleaning as well, then, do you? I, I do, an enormous <laughs> amount of vacuum cleaning. Yeah. The only difference in my, your vac and mine is that mine has to be able to suck up metal and water. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. So you see, we've got the sighter there, and you can see where it's coming out. Imagine when we pull that over where it's going to be. We should, we should name this the old boys one, shouldn't we? For those, those, those of us who can't bloody see anymore. <laughs> so, if I... Um, Better catch fish, I'll tell you that. Sorry? It's a better what? It's a better catch fish. Bloody, I didn't know it was a race. <laughs> Oh, yeah, well, got to see it, 
Once he goes that, that's it, John. <laughs> well, you just use, you, you should just stick to tying Griffiths' nuts that take about 15 seconds. <laughs> In fact, there's a way of tying a Griffiths knot where you can tie the hackle and the body at the same time. It takes 10 seconds then. <coughs> Griffiths knot. It's a brilliant fly. So, pull it back. Pull it tight. Um, with the dental floss, make sure it's slippery. So make sure when you tie it in, you come <coughs> lock, put, put locking turns onto it. And there we have Sorry it took so long. <laughs> you you should go and listen to go and watch David McFairley says now take your time. <laughs> Well, you use it as a, a means of getting to sleep, don't you, Jeff? A lullaby. <laughs> How many of you got a Dremel? Yes. Yeah. How many of you got these little cleaning brushes, the brass ones? Yeah. Best dubbing brush ever. Yeah, Best dubbing brush ever. It doesn't wreck your fly, it just picks the bits on.